Welcome to English 10 Classes. I'm Evangeline O. Espana from Sampaguita High School. Our topic for today is about a myth. Myth is an ancient story created to explain natural events. Gods, goddesses, and heroes are among the characters in myths. Some myths also present a lesson on how to live or serve as a warning to follow the rules of the society. Let's proceed to the definition of terms. Lyre. It is a stringed instrument like a small U-shaped harp. Presided. To be in charge of something. Gloomy. Dark or unhappy. Receding. Moving back. Stern. Serious. Our topic for today is about Orpheus by Alice Law. There were nine goddesses called Muses, born of Zeus and a titan named Mimesin. Each muse presided over a different art or science. Calliope, one of the sisters, was the inspiration of poets and musicians. She was the mother of Orpheus, a mortal because his father was one and gave to her son a remarkable talent for music. Orpheus played his lyre so sweetly that he charmed all things on earth. Men and women forgot their cares when they gathered around him to listen. Wild beasts lay down as if they were tame, entranced by his soothing notes. Even rocks and trees followed him, and the rivers changed their directions to hear him play. Orpheus loved a young woman named Eurydice, and when they were married, they looked forward to many years of happiness together. But soon after, Eurydice stepped on a poisonous snake and died. Orpheus roamed the earth, singing sad melodies to try to overcome his grief. But it was no use. He longed for Eurydice so deeply that he decided to follow her to the end of the world. He said to himself, No mortal has ever been there before, but I must try to bring back my beloved Eurydice. I will charm Persephone and Hades with my music and win Eurydice's release. He climbed into a cave and through a dark passage that led to the ender world. When he reached the river Styx, he plucked his lyre and Charon, the ferryman, was so charmed that he rode him across. Then he struck his lyre again and Cerberus, the fierce three-headed dog who guarded the gates, heard the sweet music and lay still to let him pass. Orpheus continued to play his lyre tenderly as he made his way through the gloomy underworld. The ghosts cried when they heard his sad music. Sisyphus, who had been condemned to roll a rock uphill forever, stopped his fruitless work to listen. Candalus, who had been sentenced to stand in a pool of receding water, stopped trying to quench his tears. And even the will to which Isaiah was tied as punishment stopped, turning for one moment. At last, Orpheus came to the palace of Hades and Persephone, king and queen of the underworld. Before they could order him to leave, he began his gentle song, leading for Eurydice. When stern Hades heard Orpheus' song, he began to weep. Cold Persephone was so moved that for the first time in all her months in the underworld, her heart melted. Oh, please, my husband, she said to Hades, let Eurydice be reunited with Orpheus. And Hades replied, I, too, feel the sadness of Orpheus. I cannot refuse him. They summoned Eurydice, and the two lovers clasped each other and turned to leave. Wait, said Hades to Orpheus. Eurydice is yours to take back to earth on one condition. What is that? asked Orpheus. She must follow you and you must not look back at her until you are on earth again. 
I understand, said Orpheus, and I am forever grateful. Orpheus and Eurydice left the underworld and made their way through the dark passage that led to the upper world. At last, they reached the cave through which Orpheus had descended. I can see daylight ahead, called Orpheus to Eurydice. We are almost there, but Eurydice had not heard him, and so she did not answer back. Orpheus turned to make sure that she was still following him. He caught one last glimpse of her with her arms stretched out to him, and then she disappeared, swallowed up by darkness. Farewell, he heard her cry as she was carried back to the underworld. Orpheus tried to follow her, but this time the gods would not allow it. And so he wandered the earth alone. He sang his sad songs to the rocks and the trees and longed for the time when he, too, would die and be reunited with his beloved Eurydice in the underworld. So that's the end of the story. Thank you and stay safe, everyone.